All right, people, we are here for the Battle Hub Draft League Season 2 review. Uh, reviewing the season that we had with the Demolition Force. Um, and let's just get right into it. I know that I've been, I'm pretty late on this. I mean, when the season end, like probably a month ago at this point, like up to like around when the DLC dropped. But, uh, you know, I was playing Witcher 3. Uh, I've been traveling a lot. I haven't had a lot of time. Finally... I, mean, I didn't have as much time as I wanted to this weekend, but I finally did get around to making all these slides because I really wanted to kind of go in depth into the season and see how we did. Uh, unlike last season, you know, last time I did like a whole um, music video because I, I felt like wanting to do that. But this time I kind of want to go in depth with you guys some content uh, before season three starts up. So let's get into it. All right. So our record this season, five and three, you know, the first season we had a 7-0 uh, we were uh, doing really great. We might have had some controversial games, but I feel like, you know, last season was pretty good. Um, this time, 5-3, and three, obviously much more competitive this season. I feel like a lot of these coaches really improved. You know, look at the best in Brandon. I mean, making it all the way to uh, semifinals. Each of them and Brandon made it to the finals. Um, so, yeah. Definitely a much tougher season than last time, I would say. Also, just tougher teams to go against. A lot of hyper-offensive teams. And, uh, of course, me and myself, I do have one of those big hyper-offensive teams. Um, but I think a lot of that, we kind of had to work out some of the... Uh, work out some of the stuff in the first part of the season. That, that's kind of what I did in the UNBL, too. Is like, I kind of struggled at first. But those last few weeks, I really pulled it together. Um, we'll kind of get into that. So... Uh, we had two Pokemon at number 5 and 6, Lucha and Toxicity, respectively. Uh, there were 5 and 6 on the kill board, so um, pretty good for them. You know, Polt was at the top for most of the season last time. Uh, Lucha kind of went up and down. It was uh, pretty close, though. It had a good amount of kills. But um, I, I think this was just a case where I didn't have just one Pokemon doing all the work. I had a lot of different Pokemon putting in some work, so... Uh, kind of diversified, you know, so that's always good. And next up we have, uh, yeah, we made it to the semifinals. So uh, having uh, my record so far in this league is that I've made it to the finals and I made it to the semifinals. So I'm kind of like in my envy arc, you know, I, I, I want to win. You know, if I ever get my, uh, I wonder what league it'll be, if it'll be in UNPL or this league, if maybe I can get my first draft league when I was, I've been so close. But you know what? I'm fine making it to the semifinals because before in past leagues, I've either uh, gotten cut off in the before the playoffs, or I haven't, or I like got lost in the first round. So uh, having come this far in these past few leagues, I feel like I've really grown as a draft player, and I've been pretty proud, you know, to make it to the semifinals. Especially, I mean, the competition this time. I mean, good grief. Um, so yeah. So the first mod that we're going to look over is Iron Valley. I was very glad to be able to pick this mod up. Um, I've, I've now used Dragapult and Iron Valley, two of the best Pokemon in all of drafts. So, you know, I love broken Pokemon. What can I say? I wanted to try this thing out. So um, we have eight games played with it in the regular season. Um, I, I'm, I was looking at the stats on my board there's only there was only eight weeks in the regular season but for some reason it has nine i mean i know it brought it to every single game i'm not sure if they're counting one of the if they're counting the semifinals or not so some of these numbers might not be quite accurate but um they should be just about right so we brought it to every single game how did it do six kills which is uh decent but not nearly as high i mean as lucha and toxicity that we'll get into later um and I think that this is just because of the fact that it's so much easier to get Lucha in, and I'll get into that later. Um, although this Pokemon is going to be super fast, and obviously I have electric terrain, so I can use it with Life Orb, I can use other items. Not a Yachi Berry, of course. I'll never forget when I wanted to use Yachi Berry Iron Valley to deal with uh, Ice Shard. But um, it does open it up for what moves I can use. And also, obviously, you can go physical, special, mixed, you know. Uh, three deaths, so that means that out of the eight games I brought it to, at least it did. It's not like it died every single time. So, um, it's more so, this just goes to prove what I was saying, that it's not like this Pokemon didn't put in, or couldn't do it. It's just that Halucha or Toxtricity got to it before this Mon could. So, 
uh, that's Iron Valiant. Like I said, probably could have done a lot better on a different build of my team. If I had built the team differently, maybe not lean so much into Electric Terrain, this probably would have been my top Pokemon. Um, but yeah. So, let's get into our next Pokemon over here. Oh yeah, overall, I'm sorry, I forgot there was a fourth one. Great mixed attacker, like I said, but it competed with how Lucha kills. So, uh, maybe someone else can make better use of it. I mean, I made pretty good use of it. Um, I don't remember Stefan putting as much work of it, with it in Season 1. Maybe someone else will in Season 3. They'll take up the reins for this. Still a great pick. I would like to see someone else put in some work with it. Also, you know, Vacuum Wave put in some work for me um, versus the Iron Bundle. I'll never forget that. So, a uh, great Pokemon. Just uh, kind of got outshined. So, Heatran is next up. And Beardew really struggled to use this in Season 1. I brought it to all my... Uh, it says I brought it to all eight games. I feel like maybe I didn't bring it to one, but maybe that was just the semifinals where I didn't bring it. But, uh, I had two kills, but that's fine because that wasn't its job. Three deaths, which, you know, if you count like eight games and only died three times, that's not too bad, you know, for a job as a defensive Pokemon. Oops, I, I, I scrolled and undid all that. Uh, overall, it did its job, but this Pokemon was the only Stealth Rocker that I had on my team, which is why I felt like I had to bring it every single week, because you know me, not only do I love rocks, I feel like rocks are pretty essential for breaking sturdy, breaking sashes, getting chips and or chip on Pokemon and all that. Uh, like I said here, really limited me in the semifinals, but as for like the first eight weeks, um, it did its job, you know, and it has a lot of cool text that I can use. Um, I didn't get to use it in week two versus Jack, but it did end up finally coming into play in the, in the uh, quarterfinals. So, Heatran overall, um, not a bad Pokemon, not the best defensive wall, um, but you know what? I think it did okay. Uh, solid like eight out of 10. If I was to rank the Pokemon Iron Val, probably eight out of 10, this mom maybe seven out of 10, something like that. You know, it's not bad. Next up, we have Ogre Pond W, a Pokemon I definitely underutilized, which is kind of sad because you know, this was one of the new Pokemon in the Teal Mask. You know, it's hard to imagine, hard to believe. But we were playing this, like, Teal Mask had just come out. Um, and uh, that I didn't make as much use of this as I wanted to. So, got five kills. Uh, so, as you can see, I mean, three games and got five kills from those. That's pretty solid. So, it was great when I used it. Um, I just wish I could have fit it on the team more. Um, two deaths. So, uh, well, you know... It having died 66% of the time, you know, it just goes to show also that uh, <laughs> it wasn't doing, it wasn't the Pokemon necessarily putting in the work as much as the other ones, but it did probably clear the way. Having water absorb, uh, I'll probably put it here, that it mitigated Pokemon like Azumarill that they didn't want to necessarily bring huge power and belly drum up versus me because I had this. I um, scared the Palafin away. Uh, well, not really. I mean, it should have done its job versus Palafin, but I'll get into that later. Um, it scared away the, the Barrascuta from liquidating. It felt like it had to go for another move to hit this Mon, and that's when I was able to get my Mandibuzz in. So overall, Ogre Pond did a pretty decent job. I would have wished it did a little bit more, but I maybe if I had brought it more, if it would have been on a different team. Kind of same thing as Iron Valiant. Just kind of hard to grow up against the get out of the canopy of Halucha and Toxtricity. Um, so yeah. Next up, we have Mandibuzz, another big defensive Pokemon. So, only four games, which, you know, I, I would have thought I would have wanted to bring it more, but um, it's just kind of competing for a role, like I said, in a, in a team where pretty much I always bring Pinkurchin, Iron Valiant, and uh, Halucha. One kill, but that's not its job. Four deaths, that is its job, so goodness. And every single game it was in it, I, that's kind of sad. But that means that it was sponging hits for my hard-hitting walls. And it did its job, for sure, versus Buridu. It, it was a lifesaver, otherwise I might have lost. Um, overall, great wall, great utility, defogger, foul play, toxic, all that. But has a lot of weaknesses that dissuaded me from bringing it to some of these games. Um, like Also, like in the semifinals. Um, but yeah, overall, Mandibuzz... Um, it did its job. Like, I think it honestly probably put it above Heatran, like 8 out of 10. Ogre Pond 7. I don't know if I'm going to spend as much time ranking all these Pokemon, but I think it did its job. I would recommend for somebody to pick this up. It's a great Pokemon and lots of utility. Somebody can make better use out of this than I did, for sure. Next up, we have Toxtricity. Big, bad Toxtricity. 
brought it to only four games so right there with mandibus but it got 11 kills top tier terra captain for sure um even though i wish i would have kind of there's definitely some games where i could have brought a better terra captain and it would have done even better um three deaths so you know not the best defense obviously overall amazing at wall breaking it did a great job I had some sweeps in the late later part of the season uh 10 out of 10 would recommend this is why i wanted to rank some of the ones um like i said i sometimes i wasn't even expecting it versus stefan and the prayer but that's when it did its most amount of work um i really wish i would have brought terra grass honestly in some of these games like terra grass would have been great versus uh terra ground electrode versus Viridu, which i i predicted i should have brought it and um, I think Terra Grass would have been great versus uh, Captain Beanard uh, for the Jet Punch. I think the second time I brought it in after Rockstar, I remember it might not have lived, but the first time it definitely would have, and it would have helped to hit it still. So, uh, yeah, overall, great Pokemon. Just wish I would have uh, brought it to more games. But like I said, it's kind of tough when that Pencurchin is taking a slot. So, next up, we have Toad Scroll. And it did four games in the regular season. Zero kills, but that wasn't really its job. Its job is to be a rapid spinner. Three deaths to be expected with that type thing. And look at this S the year. This Pokemon was trash. Definitely zero out of ten, bro. Least valuable member of the team. Not only did it freaking Massilium might prevented me from getting a taunt off on the pesky uh, Torterra, the infamous Torterra. Um, like I said, if I could go back in time when I was at the Peoria Regionals. Um, and I was thinking about what I was going to pick, I definitely would have picked Sand Slash. And not only that, because a Notorious HM was debating whether or not they wanted to get this or Sand Slash, and I took this from them. So they got Sand Slash, which actually ended up helping to defeat my Iron Valiant. So, so overall, this Mon is cursed for me. I really wanted this as kind of like I was taking on Pokemon from different people, like Beardu, I got the Heatran, and then in UNPL I had a lot of other people's Pokemon, Alucha and Concursion from Captain Beanard, and this from Raymond. But overall, I mean, this just did not do what I wanted it to do. Um, yeah, I don't think this is a great Pokemon. I think there's better Spikers, just the Mycelium might. Here's the thing, I thought, oh, it's a great way to get around Golden Go or Hatterene. Guess what? They just run ability shield. That's what happened in UNPL when I ran this Pokemon. And I had knockoff and I knew that they were gonna run ability shield, but it's just it's just better just to not run this thing, honestly. So um yeah, I think there's better rapid spinners. I think I've learned rapid spinners should either be super fast. This thing has 100 base speed, but um four times weak to ice shard and um just doesn't have good uh, defense, I think it's better to be much faster or just be much bulkier like Sand Slash. So, yeah, definitely uh, just don't use this Pokemon, bro. <laughs> I'm never going to use this Pokemon again in draft. So, uh, yeah, do not use this. All right. Next up, we have Frostlass. Only brought it to three games. Uh, kind of competing for that slot, like I said. Zero kills, but that wasn't its job. It got three deaths, but, you know, it's a suicide lead. That is its job. It performed well. And, uh, like I said, I wish I could have used it more, but I had other spikers on the team, such as Pincurchin and um, Toad Scroll. Um, like I said, I wish I would have had it more, but really it only needed to come to those games, like versus just Weavile, or um, did I bring it versus Stefan, maybe? Some of these games where I just wanted to get up hazards and um sweet from there but that that did its job like i said on this uh hyper offensive team uh also destiny bond and in the semi-finals i mean it got back scalibro below half just as a lead which you know is pretty great if you think about it, it might have cost my frost last night i didn't get up any spikes or not they get up a spike no i don't think i did because mccurchin's the one that got up a spike but like i said i think this did a good job um Having two ghost types, you know, like I, I want to have a spin blocker for these hazards. And if I lose my uh, spin blocker in the first turn, then it's not going to do me any good. So that's why I had to get another ghost that will show in a second. Um, yeah, like I said, I mainly just wanted this as an ice type. And honestly, I, I thought it got freeze dry. I think if I knew it didn't get freeze dry, I probably wouldn't lean into it. But um, kind of going along with what I said, Scorpion used this before and I was kind of taking on... Uh, my other people, other opponents, mons. Um, 
so I wanted to use this on the team. When it came, it did a good job, and uh, I think I've talked enough about Frost Lance at this point. So let's move on to Hoopa, that ghost type, like I was saying. Uh, four games in the regular season, zero kills. Very unfortunate. One death, so that just goes to show. Uh, it's not like this Pokemon came and it died. I mean, it did happen in one game to a high, or, uh, high horsepower, not high horsepower. Um, what's it called? The You guys know what I'm talking about, the ground type move. That's 120 base power. I can't think of it now. But um, that just goes to show it, it was being overshadowed by Halucha and Toxtricity. Um, suffers from the same thing as Iron Val. It was competing in a hyper offensive team, and the one death was purely on me. Um, headlong Rush is the move I was thinking of. I couldn't think of it for a second. Headlong Rush. Um, yeah, as a spin blocker, uh, this thing is not the best because its defenses are really low. But it did finally come through. It got its redemption versus just Weavile in the quarterfinals when it was able to knock off the Glow King and beat the Darkrai 1v1 with its Terra. Um, I think this is a great Terra captain. I would definitely recommend it. I'm sure someone else could make even better use of this than I did. Um, I, I mean, we've seen what Envy can do with this, for instance. So this is a great Pokemon to have on your team. Has a lot of good moves. It can has a surprisingly high attack stat. Even though, of course, it's got the base 150 attack, but its attack uh, is like 110 or something. It's not bad either. And obviously, huge spidaf. So it's just its defense and its speed they're lacking. But, you know, you could put a Choice Scarf on it or something like that. Run webs with this thing. It'd be cool. So that's Hoopa. Next up, we have Big Bad Halucha. I brought this to seven games. The only thing I didn't bring it to in the regular season was game one, which was a mistake. Uh, 12 kills, fantastic kill leader. And imagine if I brought it to game one, would I have even more? Uh, two deaths, it either uh, swept or died trying, like I said here. Great Pokemon, but like I said, it took the spotlight away from Pokemon like Iron Valley, uh, Ogre Pawn, and um, what's it called? Um, Hoopa. Because uh, it's unburdened boost means that I can stay in with this thing go the entire rest of the game versus Iron Valley if I'm relying on electric terrain uh, I only have so many turns of that and let's say if I waste a few turns trying to get the optimal turn to bring in Iron Valley uh, Maybe I only even with terrain extended maybe I only have four or five turns left and it might not be enough to do what I gotta do so it might just be safer for me to go Halucha who I can, because it's so fast, I can afford to run a lot of HP investment, and it has the defense boost from the electric seed, so uh, that's why I felt more comfortable bringing in Lucha, also it can sub, roost, all that, so just a much better Pokemon in terms of being able to set up reliably, I think, that's why this mod did so well. Even though it couldn't, imagine if I could Terra with this thing, bro, oh my goodness, I, I probably would have won. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, I would have done great. Uh, if this thing could Terra, but that would have meant that Hoopa probably couldn't Terra or Toxicity. So I think it's a good idea that uh, this thing couldn't Terra. And uh, it still did pretty good either way, though. So I'm happy with this Mon overall. It did a good job. Um, I used this Mon before in SPC, and um, I think this did even better than it did there. And that was under Psychic Terrain when I could Terra. So that meant that I couldn't be hit by priority moves. But even then, here. It still did pretty good. Um, so yeah, most of the times it wasn't the fact that I don't think the priority moves killed this thing. It was mainly just that maybe it didn't get the kill or it got whittled down or something like Rocky Helmet versus um, just Weavile. I think that's how it died. Um, I, I was able to SD up, but the Lando got me with Stone Edge. So that's how Lucha, like I said. Uh, let's get into Pinkurchin over here. So, seven games, I brought it to every single game except Stefan because they had uh, Rillaboom. Zero kills, but that was not its job. Five deaths, and that was kind of its job, just to get up terrain. And if it died, then fine. Uh, I get in the sweepers. So, like I said, without this Pokemon, although it does take up a slot, it, as unfortunate as that is, and as passive as this Pokemon is, all I can do is set up spikes or memento, get up terrain. Um, Halucha couldn't do anything that it had done. Valiant would have been forced to run Booster, although it does sacrifice a spot on the roster. I think it did its job. And I was talking with Scorpion today, and he was like, yeah, I think you might have been better off with a manual setter. But at the same time, you know, 
I've, I've tried that new NPL, though I mean, maybe that's not the best example because I was trying to use Iron Leaves. Maybe, who knows, if I would have tried to do a manual setter. Um, if I would have done better um, trying to do that. But I think just being able to bring this thing in um, and automatically get up the turn. I can sack it off, let's say, versus a certain Pokemon. Get this thing in. I don't waste any turns. I immediately can bring in the Lucha. Or, if you know, I can use this thing to get up Spikes at a Sucker Punch. It's not a bad Pokemon at all. You know, it broke the sash on the uh, Doug Trio. Um, so that was pretty cool in the semifinals. Um, yeah, maybe it would have been better to have a manual setter, but like, I don't think I would have had nearly as much success with Halusha, honestly, if I did. Uh, but yeah, that's just my thoughts on Pinkurchin. Let's go week by week by this. Um, which, did I want to say anything else about Pinkurchin? I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. Who knows? Um, whether or not, like, if I had an Electros and I tried to get up Electric Train and then Volt Switch out, or if I had a Rotom Wash like Scorpion did, if that would have been better for me. Um, I don't know, because then it kind of leaves me open. Something faster could kill me, or I might not be able to get them in and then set it up. You know, just the fact that I can get it in does make it a lot easier, although it does take a slot, like I said. So, uh, that's. Pinkurchin. Week by week, let's get into it. So week one, Notorious HIM, they got me, bro. I wanted to battle them for so long, and they definitely got me. I made miss some misplays uh, with Pinkurchin and Dode Scroll, and I was just being way too passive, and it allowed them to get in Sand Slash to remove all my hard work, getting up those spikes. How um, I underestimated Valiant. Definitely underestimated Valiant. I would have been better off, honestly, not even running Spirit Break, just running Moonblast. I would have taking out the uh, Sand Slash, honestly. And um, we didn't even bring Lucha that game either, which is would have been huge too for things like Dragapult. So 0-3 loss, but that taught me some lessons. And then versus just Weavile, I prepped so hard with Rolder, um, who also helped me a lot. I gotta get into that. Um, just talking about how much Rolder helped me out with the mock battles and doing, um, they build some heat. I mean, freaking Aurora Veil, Iron Bundle, and Calm Mind, Psychic, Landorus, T, and um, things like that versus just Weavai. And then they had a whole lot of other heat in the other weeks as well um, that definitely prepped me better for these games. Um, but yeah, we got to show off Iron Valiant's mixed potential being able to vacuum wave the Iron Bundle after getting some nice spike chip the, the vacuum wave easily killed. And then it knocked off the... Uh, Sloking Galar and killed it. Um, although I did get a little bit of a crit with a Moonblast that might have put it more so in range. That might have been a little bit of luck. But Lucha did get its first sweep with a big 4-0 victory over Just We All. But keep in mind, um, I don't think that they were necessarily trying as hard as they could have this game. They brought a victory bell out of nowhere. Um, so just keep that in mind. We're going to rematch them in the, in the quarterfinal. So we'll get into that. So week three versus Beanard was a huge power struggle. They took out my Ogre Pawn, which only, whose only job was to counter Palafin Jet Punch. And it basically cost me the game because Palafin kind of wrecked me at the end. But um, I got a hand it to them. They played really well. They had grassy terrain on the Ogre Pawn, their own Ogre Pawn, Heat Heart Flame, um, which kind of made it tricky to get in Valiant and Halucha. We kind of had this Force the 50-50 and send in Lucha and try to set it up, even though it wasn't really optimal for it because they still had Glamour in the back. So, uh, yeah, they did a really good job of that. Uh, ended in an 0-2 loss for us. Very unfortunate, but I got to say, it was a great game. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. You know, they got redemption for the freeze last time, but, you know, maybe next season I got to get a, I got to get a legit win now without any hacks please no hacks so yeah but yeah i think that was definitely on me for sending in the ogre pond um and neglecting the fact that gudra has sludge bomb i think that's definitely what cost me the game if i could have saved it in the back uh would have helped me a lot but you know it is what it is i you live and we learn so week four against almond uh i was desperate for a win now that i was one and two in the league 
but I kind of underestimated them, not gonna lie. I was like, all right, let's just do Halucha and sweep. But they actually had Intimidate uh, defensive Salamence and Unburden. I didn't even think about Unburden Grafire, bro. I thought it was gonna be Prankster something. So I could have gotten around the Grafire by uh, uh, speed creeping it, and it wouldn't have been a problem. That way, Lucha would have still outsped it. Of course, I wouldn't have had nearly as much bulk, but that would have been okay. I was able to SD a bunch of times, which um, they kind of let me do. And then uh, the Salamence did come in to try to mitigate it, and they would have definitely lived the acrobatics. But unfortunately for them, I did get a big crit. And um, I think by that point, though, because the electric terrain was gone, I think that the Grafia just couldn't do enough to beat my team at that point. Uh, obviously, it wouldn't have been a bit, wouldn't have been a 5-0 victory. It would have been much closer, but I think what they had to do is send in Grafia. Uh, to deal with Lucha instead of letting it SD up. And then they probably could honestly had me. Um, so that was on me. So that was definitely a wake a big wake up call for me too. Um, in terms of not wanting to uh, uh, forget the set. Like Pokemon aren't normally uh, going to run necessarily. But like I was expecting Moxie, Salamence and uh, Prankster Cripply. But... I gotta take into account other abilities I can have. So sorry for rambling here, uh, but yeah. Next up, week five versus Scorpion. Uh, we both had hyper offensive teams and we were both very nervous. And I was like, man, they're either gonna sweep me or I'm gonna sweep them and it's gonna be a very quick game. But unfortunately, because of my tunnel vision, I wanted to run double mirror. I really thought that Oricorio was gonna come and I thought my Hoopa strat would work. And uh, that kind of cost me because they ran Sash lead. I definitely think about like how I could have gotten around it. If I would have just gone Mandibuzz, let's say, on the first turn, and then you turned out, or even like, um, yeah, I could have easily probably you turned out, sent in Lucha, and then outsped it. Because the only way that they could really hit Lucha is by Terra Icing, and I close combat them, and I still have Iron Valley and all my Mons alive. I can get up terrain later with Vincursion because I kept it alive. I still have Hoopa. It would have put, definitely put me in a better position. I think that would have been a much better way to play um, that game. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. So, definitely think I shouldn't have uh, tunnel visioned on Mirror Herb, but we live and we learn. So, week six against Stefan. Now, this was my turning point because after that 5 0 loss, I was like, no. And then also, I had a big loss in UNPL, too, just when I was starting to turn things around. So, I was like, no. I'm gonna turn things around. So what I uh, decided to do was, I didn't bring Pincurchin, because I knew they were gonna have Grassy Terrain. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna run Grassy Seed Halucha. But they ended up misgenning it. I think they had a whole, they were debating whether or not they were gonna bring Grassy Terrain or not. Um, so they ended up uh, deciding to still bring it. But then they misgenned it, and then they couldn't do it. So that was a whole thing. Uh, but that allowed Toxtricity to come through uh, with a big sweep. I was surprised that they actually had Assault Vest uh, Rillaboom, and it still killed. I was kind of shocked when I found it was Assault Vest. Um, yeah, and Halucha was able to clean up at the end. So a uh, big win against Stefan, although I will say it, I was cutting. I was playing it very close, um, staying in on a potential Terra Ground <laughs> Meloetta. I completely forgot about the fact that Katera or that I was going to do that. Um, so yeah, I know Stefan wasn't very happy about the game, but I, I definitely needed this win because if I if I lost at any point in the rest of the league, then I was out of playoffs, and I did not want that to happen. So I was having sheer determination to win um, at this point. So week seven versus Beardu. At this point, if you haven't noticed, I have pretty much won or lost and won, lost and won every single week and uh Beardu did the same thing they were in the same boat so either way we were gonna break the cycle at this point so they had a scary rain team but i felt like with my rocky helmet mana buzz and my ogre pond w i could kind of play around that um force them to not want to go for a water type move and then send in mana buzz and it, uh could eat up the hit much better than say a liquidation so it could just roost up get rocky helmet chip on the uh Barascuta. And it was Life Orb too. It wasn't even Bandit. So that means it wasn't doing as much and it was taking check. So uh, we broke the back and forth streak. 
I would have done much better if I would have led to Eric Rye's toxicity because then I could have taken out the uh, <laughs> the electrode, which was a big problem in this game for me. Um, I don't, I should have seen that coming. I don't know why I didn't. I, I thought about it for real, guys. I thought about bringing uh, Terra Grass Toxicity, but I was like, well, Terra Normal's been doing great for me. So um, I'm gonna just do that. So definitely a big regret on my part. I don't know why I didn't think they would be soundproof. I'm pretty sure that they were in Mox versus Roller. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. So definitely that part was a little bit off for me, but uh, the Heatran walled the Iron Moth and I was confident. I was surprised they brought Iron Moth at all. Um, so yeah, week seven versus Guru. Like I said, we have to win every single game. So I needed this win for sure. Next versus a Praetor. I was like, man, I faced a, a grassy, tur grassy sea team or a grassy surge team that I face. A rain team that I face. A, a hail team or snow, I guess not technically. In the, and uh, that's not correct. It says hail, but in Gen 9, it's uh, snow. The toxicity worked out in testing versus Ursuline Blood Moon. And uh, well, it did the same thing here, surprisingly. Uh, we got a shift gear off versus the ice cube because i'm a special attacker i'm able to just ignore their um their ability so we were able to put in a lot of work with this thing and it got us into playoffs so i was pretty proud of toxicity um gave it a lot more kills um and brought it up on the kill list so good for toxicity um yeah that was the plan uh actually well the plan was uh, try to put in some work with Iron Valiant, but uh, ended up that Toxicity did the work for me. So either way, it earned us our ticket to playoffs, and I was happy with that. So next up, we got Week Two mat rematch against Just Weavile in the quarterfinals. I was feeling pretty confident about the team that I had prepped initially, and I was kind of getting burnt out doing two draft leagues at the same time. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna reuse the team. I'm gonna put SD on Halucha instead of bulk up for Landorus. And um, so yeah, I was pretty sure maybe they didn't see my team building, my team building video, so they had no clue about Pashal, uh, Power Gym Heatran, and Terra Dark Knockoff Hoopa. Terra Dark Knockoff Hoopa, and they ended up finally working. Justice for Terra Hoopa, finally putting in some work. Definitely, like I said, should have put in more work throughout the season uh, after seeing what Envy could do with this thing. But, you know, we got to use it and I'm proud of it. So, uh, and a 2 0 victory, um, much closer than our first game. So, I'm glad that just Weavile was able to um, be much more or better and had a much more competitive match. Uh, they played very well as well. Uh, Electros was a little scary at the end, but we did manage to pull it off. So, that's week two. Or, that's not week two. That's the quarterfinals brought us into the semi-finals against Raymond. Another rematch, but this time from Season 1. Um, I did not feel good about this matchup. I felt good into Maxcal Max Caliber was fine. I was like, bro, I got Iron Valiant. I've, I've been wanting to take on that Max Caliber ever since he was hyping it up all throughout the season. I was like, man, I'm just going to vacuum that thing. And, I mean, I didn't even get a chance to, but Frostlass, I was proud of Frostlass for getting that thing below half as a suicide lead and getting it shipped. Um, the problem was, was I did not feel like I could bring Heatran safely to this game. I felt like I was just going to get trapped. Maybe if I brought Shed Shell, um, Heatran, maybe I would have been okay and I could have gotten a man buzz, let's say. But that would have required me to team build the team entirely differently. Um, but I did have in my head, I was thinking about running dual wing beat Halucha. To get around focus ashes and i think if i would have run that let's say if i would have um, after pencurchin went down and i starker punched it let's say i bring in halucha and i bulk up with uh with it and then that way I, stone edge will kill um stone edge will kill zapdos and dual wing beat a plus one should kill um the azelf and it can ignore its focus ash and from there i could possibly win but it's all about whether or not I hit, and I was I was like, man, I'm just gonna miss the dual wing beat. Do I really want to do that? But the fact is, I was having to rely on Stone Edge either the way to beat Zapdos, so I should have just gone all in with that. Um, but you know, Monday morning quarterback, you know, can't change the past. So 
but that's just my thoughts looking back on this game. Still a very fun game, it was very close, and uh, I still think that Raymond definitely deserved the win, because, I mean, they had Wakonberry, Corv, they had Terra Poison, Doug Trio, they had a lot of stuff for my Pokemon to uh, defeat them. I, I thought I was sitting pretty with Ogre Pond and built that Terra Poison game off on that Doug Trio, I should have known it, it would have had something. But it's not like I could have swapped out either way. Shed Shell Toxtricity, I thought it was going to do more, but it did not. Um, I'm not even sure if overdriving into the Corv would have changed too much. It would have been a lot. It would have been much weaker. Um, maybe if I overdrive and then I force him to bring in Doug Trio on my Terra Ice, it could have done something. But like I said, uh, Monday morning quarterback. Really, what lost me this game was that my only rocker was Heatran. And I wanted another stealth rocker one another mom that could do it so i think this is definitely a lesson that you need more than one rocker on your team um or at least find some way to get around it so yeah not even my spike could get around as elf either way um so yeah so that's this week um and that was the end of our run in the bhl season two so final thoughts on this season much tougher opponents in the last season overall power of every team i faced felt a lot stronger um i think there was just a lot more hyper offensive teams which in my theory is because i don't know maybe it's because uh points went down and so that meant that people were gonna first go for the big hyper offensive goobers i mean look at myself i picked hylucha and iron valiant and uh didn't leave as much room for defensive pokemon so that's when you get those games where the pokemon uh, have uh, there was a lot of sweeps this season I'll just say and um, if you don't have defensive counterplay then that's what's going to happen um, but I think um, maybe increasing the points maybe increasing the amount of Pokemon you have to draft will force uh, people to maybe consider what Pokemon they bring maybe it will reduce the amount of hyper offensive goober teams but you know, maybe they're always going to bring out we'll see we'll see what happens in future seasons uh, season one, I had Polt. This time, I had Valiant. Uh, two of the biggest goobers in draft. Um, but I think this season, being forced to run the same three Pokemon, Halucha, Pinkerch, and Iron Valiant, outside of week one, of course, um, when I didn't bring Lucha, um, I just felt like I didn't have as many options with building. I felt like to build my best possible team, I had to bring those three. And even then, I mean, look at how many games I lost, you know, in the regular season. Um, it just, I felt like my season one team, I, I just, honestly, I missed that team a lot more than I think I'm going to miss this team. As, as much fun as I had with Iron Valiant and everything, that season one team with, uh, Ting Lu and Alolan Muck and, um, Jagapult and Rotom Mo, like, I just have a lot, I felt like I had a lot better plays, I had a lot more, uh, versatility with that team say than this team i felt like i could do a lot more i feel like i definitely uh in the team builder i spent much more time building the teams because i was having to consider many more pokemon and i could make more pokemon fit on the team every week obviously week to week so uh team still did pretty well though let's not lie i made it to the semifinals i'm happy with that uh we got some partial sweeps close games everything in between um I definitely feel like this team uh, could have done better, maybe, if I would have drafted. I don't know. I don't know what I could have done to make the team do better. Probably just make better plays, honestly. There was definitely some games where I misplayed, and uh, the team could have done better. So maybe someone that doesn't make as many misplays as me um, would have done even better with this team. I'm still pretty proud of it. I think it's a very strong team. I just think it's... Um, I don't want to say gimmicky, but I just feel like definitely with the Pinkurchin, there might be something to it where I'm just pigeonholed and I'm forced to run the same Pokemon every week. So that's that. Yeah, to kind of prove my theory about terrain and weather teams where the variety, having a team like in my season one team where I could bring any combination of these Pokemon every single week versus this team, my opponents know I'm going to bring Incursion, Iron Valley, and Halucha, you know, and then it's just, well, what three Pokemon are they going to pick besides that? So I, 
my opponents probably were able to predict my six every week, I would say. Um, although maybe sometimes a lot of times they expected toxicity or Hoopa. And they were those were my Terra captions and they were great. And I probably should mention that that I didn't bring them as much as I wanted to. But like I said, I mean when I have to bring those first three, and then I have to bring a stealth rocker, and I have to bring a rapid spinner, you know, it just doesn't leave as much room for toxicity and Hoopa. Unfortunately. So I'm definitely gonna take that into account in the following seasons. Um, I can tell you right now, my UNPL team uh, for season four definitely based some of my decisions off of this team. And uh, for season three of BHDL, I'm also gonna take some of the things that happen in this, uh, this league into account. And uh, stuff other coaches say, you know, I like to listen to what people have to say. Um, overall, though, I think I've rambled enough. I've given the people uh, as much of an insight as I think I can give. Um, yeah, like I said, happy with the team. Uh, I just think that it could have done a little bit. That's the season two recap from Emerald Miner. We'll see you guys next season.